Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flare. Hope everybody out there is doing very well today. We're playing some league action for you. We've got a couple new cards we've changed since the previous league video, but why are we playing a friendly league instead of a competitive league? Well, I'm going to show you, and this is a Wizards article about the updates to the Magic Online client, which include a lot of visual and aesthetic ones, but important to our video here is the fact that they are doing away with the distinction between friendly and competitive leagues, replacing it with kind of just one-size-fits-all leagues, I suppose, that are kind of a happy medium, in theory, between the what was at stake versus what was the reward for a friendly league and a competitive league. It's kind of right in the middle, and that's all well and good. I've got no issues with that. Um, I haven't really read up on what people think of it, but seems fine to me. Um, so this is kind of our goodbye to the friendly leagues. <laughs> this is the last ever friendly league we'll play unless they walk back that decision. So um, that, I think it's a fine time to do it, partially because really everybody just wants to play with the Modern Horizons cards, right? So we might as well do something a little different. We're going to play the last ever friendly league and uh, on this channel. And we're also going to play two new cards. They're not new to the archetype or anything, but um, two cards that I did not have in my previous league. Um, one of them is Abrupt Decay, and one of them is Duress. Now, both of these cards, I have been observing a need for them more so than, than in the past. The stock of these cards has been rising. There's just so many decks in the format where a 7th 1-mana discard spell... Uh, specifically one like Duress that can take away any non-creature, non-land card is awesome. And Abrupt Decay. Abrupt Decay has always been a very good card in our deck, right? But the one of, at least one of the big reasons I was not as high on the card is simply blue-white control. So many of its big payoffs were not able to be hit by the Decay, but th all that has changed. They play so many CMC3 cards in their deck that... Whereas Decay used to be a card that I side out against Blue-White, now we'll see how it goes, but it might even be one that I bring in the second copy of. Now, it's we do have a lot to do against Control this build. We do have the Duress as well. We have the Choke. We have a lot of other good stuff like Fulminators and Decay uh, Brutalities. But So who knows? But the point is that Abrupt Decay's stock has been rising, and if you look at a couple... Of the more recent spoilers, I'm thinking specifically of, uh... The Mariner? What's the name of that card? It's a blue-white two-drop, you know, hate bear slash taxer. Um, that, that has some people worried. Wandering Mariner, something like that. In any case, I'll, I'll touch on that when I do a wrap-up of the whole spoiler season. So today, later today, or tomorrow at the latest, I will be doing the part four of my spoiler series where we review every card that's worth reviewing since I did my last one. And then there's going to be a part five where we do a conclusion, we do a wrap up, and we touch on some meta predictions like the one that I just made about Abrupt Decay and Duress getting a little bit better. So this is a great opportunity to test those cards, again, while we're doing, while we're just playing Waiting for Horizons to come out, while we're in a friendly league anyway. Um, the stakes are a little bit lower. We get, we get partial recoup of our ticks even if we bomb out on this league. So, um, and I, I think those cards are good choices right now anyway. So, uh, good times. I, I hope you'll stay with me for this league. I look forward to playing it. And uh, as we're starting up match number one, let's thank two new Patreon supporters. Now, I did give these two fellows a shout out in the previous Horizon spoiler video, but everybody gets a gameplay vid shout out because those are what gets the views, right? So we have D.A. Binder, who is a confidant. Welcome to the fold, my friend. Thank you so much for your support. And we also have Schneier, who is a member of the tire list here. Very, very generous of you, my friend, and thank you as well. Thanks as always to all Patreon supporters. Could not do it without you. And here we are playing... Um... Round number one, and I guess we are going to run out Marsh Flats and Pass. It lets us uh, get a Swamp and Fatal Push on the end step, if that's what we want to do here. Well, Verdant Catacombs Fetch this could be some kind of a mirror match, but they get Forest, so I guess not. Search for tomorrow. Oh, boy. 
Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It's our worst matchup, our worst top tier matchup anyway, right off the bat. It is, I, I assume, some kind of a Valakut deck, although I suppose we don't know that for sure. I'm not sure what our opponent's up to here with, uh... Okay. Alright, so our hand is pretty bad against Scapeshift. I'm going to fetch on the end step here. With a Bob as our turn two play, we're unlikely to, you know, stay above the threshold no matter what we do. We only draw Tarmogoyf. Do we like the Bob or do we like the Goyf? I mean, I guess as things stand, they're both going to die to a Lightning Bolt, and the Bob might actually have a better clock, at least for one turn. Plus, drawing us to more disruption is, of course, welcome, so... Let's go ahead and play the Bob out, I suppose. Alright, so I'm very happy we have the play, and you know, if we if our Bob finds us some hand disruption, a Liliana, things like this, we could uh we could end up in decent shape. Alright, they've got the Sakura Tribe Elder. We flip a Verdant Catacombs Tireless Tracker. Honestly, I... think I'm going to offer the trade even though we have Fatal Push. And maybe that's just bad. Yeah, Fatal Push is pretty dead game one. And we have to give the opponent credit and assume they're a good player, so... It's not like we're going to bait them into a bad block just by simply attacking with Confidant, right? So, I guess we're just going to clear that thing out. Play a Tarmogoyf. Attack for two. If this was post-side, though, I might consider... Might consider, uh... Just actually offering the trade, because they could have some more worthy Fatal Push targets. But again, game one, that's just very unlikely. So, I guess we are just all in on this, Bob. You know, it's, it's, it is a relevant contributor to the clock. It is a very relevant contributor to our uh, ability to disrupt them, such as it is. The big problem with this matchup is that our disruption is not very good, especially game one. You just really start ha hard to stop them from making their land drops, and that's how they kill you. Uh, land drops plus a top-decked Scape Shifter Titan, and... Uh, we did not have Lily of the Veil on turn three. That might have been our... That's usually one of our best avenues to victory, but... Our start's okay. It's okay. But again, we really still need to hit stuff like Land Disruption and Liliana of the Veil here. So the opponent having ramped twice is already on five lands. Through the Breach. Okay, so it's Breach Titan that's arguably even worse. I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that it is. Maybe it's more easily disrupted by us, I guess. But in this situation where we are lacking the disruption that we need, I'd say it's worse. The old Turn 3 Primeval Titan. Well, you know... Okay, they got two Valakuts, so here comes a couple uh, couple mountains, I suppose, off the Titan. Pretty awful, but again, we're not really supposed to win this matchup anyway. Yep, we got a chump to stay alive, and we're almost certainly just going to scoop next turn anyway, but might as well go through the motions here. Alright, so, yeah, I think we needed... Well, we probably needed a painless bob flip, among other things, but I think we needed Field of Ruin to have a shot here of staying alive. 
Because then we could field one Valakut trophy the other and hope they have Stone Cold nothing left in their hand. But... So we're just going to pass hold up trophy, just get a little bit more information, maybe. Or just die to a land drop, that's the most likely thing. <laughs> but... <sighs> yep. Alright, not sure why they're passing. Maybe they're looking for more information off of our Bob, so we'll just scoop to this. Fair enough, opponent. You, uh, you concealed more information from us. Not that we're probably going to learn anything spectacular there, but... In any case, that is uh, uh, it's just never what we want to see, is it, this matchup? Never what we want to see, especially right out of the gates in a league. Like, it just, just starts us off on the wrong foot. But anyway, we like Fulminator Mage here. We like Surgical Extraction. And the new tech to this league of Duress is also welcome, although admittedly Abrupt Decay is not. Um... Uh, Deathmark, pretty good. Collective Brutality, I'd say so. Nothing else really cutting it here, as far as I can tell. So, seven rising to eight cards to bring in? Seems doable. Like I said, I don't rate Abrupt Decay that highly here. It might occasionally play like a Prismatic Omen or something like that, but especially in the Breach version, I, I doubt that's the case. Um, and of course, we can cut pushes. Last Hope doesn't do much, and if we just bring in all eight, then we just kind of trim two slower, clunkier threats, which I kind of like to hedge, as you know. Uh, one tracker out, one scoos out seems fine to me. Pretty decent balance here. I like this setup. And I guess as much as I'm going to like a setup against this matchup, so sure, let's run it back. Try to steal two games off of Breach Titan. Okay, uh, we have Tarmogoyf into Double Fulminator, so even though we don't disrupt their hand at all, this is a definite keep. If the opponent takes even one mulligan here, I might be fairly confident even, but they don't. We're still giving ourselves a really good shot here. Turn one, search for tomorrow. Yep. And once more, we're kind of priced into rolling out a Tarmogoyf into a potential Lightning Bolt, which... It's far from ideal, it's one of many reasons hand disruption is good in this matchup, so you can, you know, get the graveyards nice and nice and full for the turn two goif, but if they don't have the bolts, and if they play a non-basic land here, which admittedly they might not, they were on kind of mono basics for their early progression um, last game, so who knows, but... Suspending another search. All right, now play a stomping ground tapped. That'd be cool. Verdant Catacombs, darn. Well, our Fulminator plan has to be delayed, but it, you know, should, should still be decent here. So we're going to attack first, just in case this prompts them to fetch for whatever reason. Whether it be to go get a Lightning Bolt, or just because they want to be done with their actions for the turn, but that's not the case. Wisely playing around Fulminator Mage, so... Yeah, it's not very mana efficient, but let's play the Grizzly Bear. 
This is uh, very, very bad against Anger of the Gods, but that card should not really be in against us. I think we're more likely to encounter it main board. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll play a card like that main board as a hedge against the meta, and even though it's not great against us, uh, speaking generally, it can, uh, it can certainly two-for-one us in a situation like this. And in some matchups, a two-for-one is bad, but fine. But here, we're already so cold to just how their deck operates that a two-for-one just puts our clock back so far that we can't really feel feel like we've got a shot after that. So, Obstinate Bailoff. Yeah, I mean, that is annoying, but we're going to have a really nice turn next turn thanks to Deathmark. So... All right, Surgical Extraction, huh? I think we need to save that for a higher priority target. So the Bailoff has been marked for death. Death Mark still really pulls its weight in, in this deck as far as I'm concerned, guys. It's a, it's a pretty sweet one. So... Kind of think I want to fetch and shock here. Can just see a world in which having triple black is relevant. And also, of course, we want more Skuz mana if possible. Alright, so our clock is okay. I mean, definitely not going to get it done on its own, but... With the help of Fulminator, plus perhaps some more Disruption off the top, and maybe Surgical Extraction, you know, if they've got to expose a Valakut. That would be nice, but... Obstinate Bailoff is just such an absolute beating against us, it... Prices us into using removal, which admittedly worked out fine there, but sometimes can make our turns a lot more clunky. It gains four life, which is relevant for setting our clock back, but most importantly, it absolutely blows out Liliana of the Veil, who is one of our best cards. Okay, there's the Valakut. Cool. See what we draw here. One mana discard would be nice. Uh, it's Dark Confidant, so not not quite, but let's play out this Fulminator. We'll hit the Valakut. We will eat their Bailoff. We'll attack, then we're going to draw step Surgical Valakuts. So if this gets any out of their hand, that could be crucial for us. If it doesn't, we're still playing a lot fairer of a game, and might be able to get there on the power of... Uh, stuff like even Hissing Quagmire lines up well against like a, a fairer Titan um, and the power of Goyf and Scooz and Bob because they don't have the inevitability of land drops turning into lightning bolts this way. So uh, we really, of course, want the high upside of them having as many copies of Valakut in hand as possible. But, you know, even if they don't, I, th I still think this is the correct line. This is still the winning line if we are indeed live to win. <clears throat> Not sure what the holdup is for our friendly OP. Yeah, so while we're waiting, as I was saying, we're going to have a... 
another round of the type of deep card by card, you know, deep dive an an analysis that we did for the previous batches of cards coming up on this channel. And then at the end, uh, you know, after that's done, after we've had maybe a couple days to digest everything, I will do a Part 5 Modern Horizon Spoilers segment where we do a wrap-up and we talk about um, the cards that I do think, you know, having seen the Cohesive Hole, are likely to, to make the cut and, uh, and why, and talk about a couple sample lists that you can begin iterating with. Um, oh, the opponent just scoops. Interesting. Very interesting. I didn't expect that. I mean, they still are very live to just hard cast Titans and play a fair game, but uh, it's possible that they had something in their hand they didn't want me to know about and they thought their odds were pretty low, or they just, you know, they just didn't think they could beat our stuff, but they had five cards to, to our one in hand, so I, I didn't feel like I was all that far ahead, but hey, I'll take it. So... Uh, 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 any changes? So, the only th sideboard card we really saw was Obstinate Bailoth, and of course, that just is what it is. You can't always play around it. Um, and nothing else in our sideboard really <laughs> does anything against it anyway, except Fatal Push, but... Is Fatal Push better than anything in our deck? It's not better than Death Mark, it's not better than Surgical, than Discard... Uh, yeah, Collective Brutality, it's just so important to take away their, you know, their Breach, especially on the Breach version, but also their Ramp spells in general. The Life Gain's not irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could, on the draw, cut yet another threat and play a single Fatal Push. But uh, then are we going too low on threats? Do we want to just cut, like, a Kalidus? Kalidus is... Pretty decent if we're playing a fair game, though. Like, if we surgical them again off of Valakut or or even maybe off of Titan. Yeah, I think Fatal Push is just quite poor. Let's run it back. Gargamel is the opponent's name. I think we saw this name on the trophy leaderboard as we were uh, starting up this league. Wonder if this is <laughs> a double Q situation, because, you know, for a leader, the opponent's taking, taking their time here, but that's all right. That's all right. We are... Uh, you know, it's not like we're many, many minutes ahead on the clock. We're just just a few minutes ahead, and uh, and it's all good. It's all good. So, this has been a really exciting spoiler season. I have enjoyed it, but at the same time, I'm actually going to be happy when it's over. Partially because then we have the full data to work with. Then we can just start really knuckling down and down and figuring out what our land base is going to look like and all that stuff. Um, what do we think about this hand? I mean, obviously it's pretty bad, but we haven't seen any discard this entire time, and now we've got two of our best pieces, plus a Field of Ruin. The opponent keeping seven. I just don't think, like, what are we mulliganing to? Especially because they can turn three Titan us like they did in game one. Like, even if we mulligan to Fulminator Mage or Liliana, that's probably not, arguably not good enough without discard as well. So we'd be trying to mulligan to a six with hand disruption and with big payoffs. And a functional mana base. I think this is a keep, all things considered. It's just one that I'm very... Yeah, I'm just <laughs> very underwhelmed by, but on the draw we're more likely to hit the turn 2 Tarmogoyf, the turn 3 Fulminator, the turn 3 Liliana, the things that we need to make this hand good. Uh, land is not one of them, but we still got 
A couple shots at it, I suppose, and they just kept a hand that's pretty immune to discard, sadly. Um, it's just all lands once we take that relic. So, at least, uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't even know. Let's just see what we draw here. We draw a trophy, okay. I think we pass on this Thought Seize for at least one turn. We've got to we've got to wait until we're more certain it's going to hit something. Opponent with the far seek, you got it. Deploying the mountain and passing with, I guess, just one unknown in hand. So we might be at the point where we have to risk the Thought Seize, and I, I guess we do. Because they're just on Breach Mana, they're on Hardcast Titan Mana. So, sure, Thought Seize you. Prepare ourselves to whiff. Oh no, we get a Breach. Okay, well, that is something. And then we play the Goyf, which was a good draw. Just came maybe a turn too late to be optimal, but... We have Field and Trophy to answer Valakut. However, we have not begun to clock them yet, and they're just live for top decking us. So... Alright. Hissing Quagmire now... I guess what we're supposed to do here is play that, because it's going to contribute to the clock. We also don't want to scare them away from showing their Valakut, and we have Trophy that we're holding up anyway, so I guess Quagmire Overfield makes sense here. But of course, if they have, you know, if they've got some way to get a couple copies in play, like if they find a Titan, we're in, we're in a lot of trouble, but we'd be in a lot of trouble no matter what. The Hardcast Simeon Guide. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Well, Deathmark can't kill the Mana Monkey, and Fatal Push can, so hey, there's <laughs> there's a reason to want the push, but of course it's not, uh... That's not our game here. Inquisition, pretty bad draw. And awkwardly enough, we can't really attack with the Quagmire. Because then we go totally shields down. So. There's the Goyf, and I guess now we, we will expose the field because... They're just probably pretty priced into per playing that Valakut unless they draw another land. And if they draw another land, well, they're going to... Sandbag the Valakut anyway, like they've been doing. Attacking with the ape. Fair. You got us. Maelstrom Pulse. Alright, I mean, I guess... I guess we'll Inquisition now. They could have, like, a Lightning Bolt in hand. They don't. They just sandbagged another land. All right. So, because we have this trophy, I'm actually going to go ahead and pulse the ape. This is a race situation. This is going to grow our Tarmogoyf. And this is going to stop them from attacking us or indeed pivoting to the chump block plan. And we couldn't attack with the Quagmire last turn, of course, because we did Inquisition. We got a Scooze. Okay. So, uh, the <laughs> our turns continue to be really awkward. 
in terms of like wanting to hold up our trophy in field and do something proactive and attack with Quagmire. We just kind of can't have it all. So... Hmm... It's very interesting here. Play out that land and I think we are going to get the scoos down. Again, if the opponent's sitting on a lightning bolt or something to that effect, this is better, I would say, than investing all that mana into Quagmire. But at the same time, it, it probably won't change the outcome of this match, whether we attack with the Quagmire this turn or whether we deploy the Scoos. This way, we're just a little bit safer. We do have the ability to field and then trophy. And I suppose there was no real reason to play the Scoos before we attack, but realistically, there's also no real reason not to. They either have a Lightning Bolt or they don't. They're not going to uh, be sandbagging anything that could kill this Tarmogoyf in case we play Scoos, right? So, sorry for the opponent. All right, my friends, we're back. So, kind of lost my place in the game, but yeah, I guess we're just attacking with the Goyf here. Once more, we get to hold up field and trophy this way. And hopefully we're just going to see the opponent scoop here. They are facing lethal. Even if they can bolt one of Scoos or Quagmire, they are still facing lethal. There's a Valakit. I don't see any reason not to field this, so I guess I'm going to. They get a trigger here, but that should not save them. Uh, we'll just gain a life. Goyf goes back to being a 5-6. And they just scoop. Okay, so that was, uh, I mean, some unnecessary waiting, some unnecessary interaction. But uh, at the end of the day, we did get there against what I have said many a time and still maintain is our worst top-tier matchup. So I'm just thankful that we squeaked by with a win there against... Uh, yeah, somebody who is up on the leaderboard, the trophy leaderboard, and uh, playing a deck that's so horribly, horribly effective against us. But anyway, uh, yeah, sweet. Well, good start to this friendly league, and the cards we're kind of testing, you know, the second copy of Decay is not something we want to see even the first copy of here. The duress did not make an appearance, but... Um, our relatively sketchy keep of a five-land double thought seize hand... Uh, proved to be surprisingly good um and i believe even one of the thought seizes blanked right but uh taking away that relic was big game because of course tarmogoyf is what won us the game and uh field of ruin was pretty nice there as well so yeah we will not look that gift horse in the mouth let's not see any more valakit decks for through the rest of this league though shall we that, did Valakit get any new toys out of Horizon so far? I don't think they did. I certainly hope not. On the play. Uh, yeah, hand is fine. 
just like we did in round one game one, we're going to lead on the Marsh Flats in case we need to go get a uh, Swamp and Fatal Push something on the instep. Island. Alright, we'll get a tomb. Blooming Marsh. Sure. The only thing we're worried about is Spell Snare here for our Goyf, but... That's a very... Very little played card in Modern. It is usually just a one of in the decks that play it. I don't think you should generally play around it, and the opponent will opt. Sure. Now, if you if you have the option to play around it or not play around it, then that's a totally another matter. Obviously, keep that spell snare in mind. But it's usually correct in a situation like that where we're on the play, where we're against a, re a pretty unknown opponent. You know, just make him have it. Might be blue white control that just had island as turn one as their turn one play. A uh, wall of omens. All right. Well, wall you know is not. Hmm. So we have a couple options here. Sorry, I kind of in, I kind of kind of cut off my own thought because I'm just moving on. Uh, wall is wall is definitely a blue white control card in the new shells, and it might. This could also be like blue-white mid-range with a lot of the blink effects. So what we could do here is just fatal push it and then get in for three. That's like how we start the clock. But it, you know, if it's either variation, honestly, it might be better to just kill this thing with collective brutality. So we'll attack first. Yeah, you know, I kind of like this. Alright, so the opponent's got an absolutely stacked hand. Three lands only, though, but double Supreme Verdict, which makes our killing of the Wall of Omens pretty bad. Dovin's Veto and Cryptic Command are our options. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. It's not looking very good. We need to draw some great gas off the top for this to be uh, anywhere near a win for us. So I guess we're just taking one of the big payoffs, either Cryptic Command or Supreme Verdict. We could also take Dovin's Veto in case we top deck a Liliana, but... Pretty happy just taking away the Cryptic Command. And we need to draw a discard. We need to draw... Planeswalker. Like, that's just a hand jam-packed with value. They are, in theory, <laughs> alive to be stuck on lands. But the likelihood of that, as you know, is not very high. So, let's get in with our Tarmogoyf. Run out the catacombs and pass. The opponent might well snap opt here. Oh, they don't need to. They just drew another opt. Okay. I was going to say that makes their supreme verdict worse if they're kind of priced into the snap opt to hit their fourth land drop, but it is blue-white control, so yeah, they just hit it. Okay, Snapcaster Mage, sure. Targeting Opt. I 
I guess we're going to hold on to our fatal push here. Like, they, they're just going to have to verdict this thing, I think, at some point. Might as well make it a little bit worse for them. Or they just chump, sure. So the effect that the opponents played really conservatively, like holding up Dovin's Veto, I think has been their main incentive here against a potential Liliana. It has worked to our favor, because we didn't have any good follow-up plays anyway. Now, again, I'm still... Oh, so many ops. They're just crafting their hand. Um, they're doing a lot of bottoming, so getting a lot of value. Uh, yeah, I'm still not optimistic, because their hand is just so jam-packed, but... The D-Sphere, sure. Okay, so... I think I'm actually going to fire off the trophy here. We're beyond the point where ramping them really matters. It's never good, but this also could get the Dovin's Veto out of their hand, and if it doesn't, well, I mean... Okay, it's going to get vetoed, sure. So I don't mind my trophy trading with a veto, because of course then we don't ramp them. But now we really need to draw something good, and it's just a treetop village. Now these man lands are pretty great overall, but what a window this was for something. Anything that's kind of a, uh, a way to really start punishing the opponent. That said, you know, if we can keep them off of Fields of Ruin... And by keep them, I mean <laughs> just hope they don't get them, because there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, you know, the Manlands could go a really long way. They've got Supreme Verdicts that are basically dead in hand. Maelstrom Pulse, sure. So, Cryptic Command is just such an amazing tempo play for them right now. Firing up both man lands is better against just a Path to Exile or something. We also have the option to pulse away our sphere and get back our Goyf, but I kind of don't want to even do that because they just have those verdicts in hand. So I'm going to hang on to the pulse and we're just going to fire up both man lands, make them have a Cryptic Command. Awkwardly enough, this is not quite lethal, but <laughs> it's pretty close. And the opponent's just continuing to make land drops without them being utility land, so that's really good for us. Thoughtseize. It's a good draw, and I think I'm supposed to use it since we don't have quite lethal on board anyway, so let's Thoughtseize. Vendillion click. Okay. Click. Targeting the opponent. So... I think I'm going to field here to get Revolt and then push the click with the ability on the stack. Technically, might have been better to get Forest there. Sure, it doesn't matter. We have all the color we need, all the colored sources we need. This looks like a logic knot. So they're clicking away. Yeah, logic knot for four. Sure. You got us. I mean, fatal push trading with a counter spell in general is pretty fine in this matchup. So 
They uh, click away a verdict. Thought Seize will resolve, and we see Opt Verdict. All right, well, how do we like taking away the Opt and then simply pulsing the click and then just trying to win with Manlands? Kind of like it. Kind of like it. So the opponent's really in top deck mode now, and of course they can get there, and if they do get there, you know, if they, they need to rip Planeswalkers off the top, basically, as far as I can tell, or chain cryptic commands together. Uh, abrupt Decay, interesting draw, but for the moment, I... Whoa, wrong click. I think it's correct to just do what we've been doing, attack with both. Make them have a cryptic, or make them have what, uh, you know, snap path... Things like that. Alright. Will our creature lands get us there? They will. Wonderful. That was uh, relatively unexpected. And, you know, I did kind of say, when we drew that hissing quagmire, I was like, oh, what a window it would be for, you know, a Liliana or something like that, or a tireless tracker. They're totally tapped out. The coast is clear, but... You know, as it turns out, sometimes, sometimes the creature lands are enough, you know? They're in our deck for a reason, my friends. They're not simply ways to clunk up our opening progressions and make us play with a handicap. They are actually very, very good. So, I probably still want all four walls of omen, our fatal pushes out, but we did see wall of omens. We did see Vendillion click. There might be, uh, obviously, Snapcaster Mage we saw. There might be some other stuff, but let's uh, let's figure out what's good. So Fulminator Mage, Choke, and Duress are all amazing. Um, and then, you know, three Fatal Pushes at least can come out, maybe just all four. I would put Collective Brutality and Nile Spellbombs in the slight second tier. And then it's a little difficult to rate Abrupt Decay, because... I mentioned it's better against blue-white control, and we did see V-Click and D-Sphere, but we don't know how heavy they are on those three-drop Planeswalkers. Uh, we expect now that Narset and Teferi are probably part of a blue-white deck, but we don't exactly know, right? So, let's make our other cuts. Uh, Blooming Marsh, Eskuz are fine cuts here. That would put us at 59. Uh, anything else? So... Let's just cut all four pushes. We'll play one spell bomb. We'll play the collective brutality. We're playing. This is kind of like normal blue white control sideboarding stuff that should be good for sure. And then if there is a game three, we can consider adding back a fatal push, adding an abrupt decay, adding a second spell bomb. But right now we're very well balanced. And I like it. Opponent will keep seven, and we have an unplayable seven that we must mulligan. All right, this hand is uh, very medium on the draw, but it's a keep. Uh, bottom that. Even though it's a, uh, it's the second black we need to cast Liliana, I think it's just too bad to, number one, like, knowingly put another land on top when we're already behind on, on actual spells having mulliganed. And number two, having three basics in your first seven cards against blue-white control is horrifyingly bad uh, against things like Path to Exile, Settle the Wreckage, Field of Ruin. Um, we're also very, very likely to... There we go. Hit a, hit another black land anyway, right? So, would have preferred a Hissing Quagmire, but I'll take the Blooming Marsh here. And... So... Also would have not minded a discard spell because, of course, right now we are on the plan of just blind jamming our Bob and then on turn two and then blind jamming our Liliana on three and hope they miraculously stick. They don't get countered, they don't get removed. That's our hope. It's very unlikely, but... Hey, well, Bob's at least going to resolve. Hey, Fulminator Mage, that's a good draw. Okay. 
Okay, we're doing stuff. All right, so if the opponent is kind of between a rock and a hard place, if they want to either path or let the bobbers all, uh, stay around, they might just have detention sphere, though. It is path, sure. Hmm. I think I need to get Swamp there, even though we want more green sources for Skews. Because there is a concern for... Like, having, like, drawing a discard spell this turn, basically, would have been why I wanted triple black. But we didn't do that. So what do we do instead? Well, I think we are playing around counter magic, and at the same time we kind of have to jam spells. I don't think it's correct to just use Scooze as bait, because Abrupt Decay is not a good payoff, or, uh, you know, for, for having baited out a spell. So I think we have to jam a 3-drop, and I think it might as well be Fulminator Mage, because it plays around Dovin's Veto. Whereas Liliana does not. Does not, however, play around Logic Knot or Mono Leak, which it looks like. It looks like the Knot. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that was correct. And we did get a piece of counter magic out of their hand. So now we're forcing the opponent to have another one, which, you know, they probably do, but... We're giving ourselves another chance to draw a discard spell as well. We don't. It is a Marsh Flats. Well... Hmm. So there's actually... Now there's incentive to lead on Skoos, because... If it sticks, we can just be more patient. And if they, like, you know, cryptic counter draw, we get to resolve Liliana. Alright, because it resolved, I think we we do lean on the Skoos a little bit here. We're going to make Logic Knots and Snapcasters worse and have a higher likelihood of uh, getting our Liliana down next turn, especially because, once again... Okay, they got Path. Sure. Uh, because, once again, we could have... Had another shot at drawing discard. I'm just going to empty out their graveyard here. That is definitely worth the two life. I also think it's worth going shields down on Abrupt Decay, but... Alright, so once again, I believe that to be correct. Like, it is possible that they had nothing in hand besides Opt and Path in their Liliana order resolved, but... We gotta play around the things that are the highest likelihood of uh, of being present, and I think we have so far. But let's see what we get here. More lands, too many lands. Um, we don't have a like. There's this tension right now between playing Liliana or not. She, like, the earlier we get her down, the better. The better she will be, but the more punished we are if they have a cryptic command. I think I'm just going to go for it, but there is a real argument for just saying, okay, okay, she resolves, sweet. There's a real argument for just saying, let's wait till we can double spell. But we went for it, and I guess it did pay off. So now we're emptying our hand, we'll pitch a tomb, play the field. Opponent pitches a detention sphere, interesting. Might be that they have another one, either that or they just have a better answer to Liliana. They have a Vendillion click. Okay, they just are going to try to attack her off the field. Uh, well, we're going to decay that. And now the opponent, they've got one card left. Plus the top deck. I mean, okay, Serum Visions is, is good, but the pressure's on. The pressure's on the opponent. We are drawing very live. You know, obviously we can hit lands that are non-utility, and that's pretty bad, but we can also just hit a Tarmogoyf, so that's a pretty good one. 
Pick up. Pass to you. Ah, uh, they got another path. Annoying. But... Oh, a cryptic out of the hand. Feels good, feels good. Well, another top deck to land is less than ideal. Opponent's got the opt-in response. Okay, okay. Oh my goodness, a restoration angel. That's unbelievably good. That is such an incredible top deck, it's unreal. Well, now we're in trouble. Now we went from a very decent position, but one where we're cold to a good top deck, to actually getting the, the good top deck. Uh... Wait, Fibble Fib the Lost? Very interesting. I'm behind on the clock, so I'm not going to take a ton of time to try to figure out what's up with that, but... Trophy. All right, well. Trophy the Angel. And... I guess because they're playing these blink effects, I'm supposed to edict the wall. Again, obviously there's an argument for the alternative. There is an argument for... Simply... Uh-oh. Teferi, Jace, Teferi. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, they can deal with our Liliana anyway this way, right? So I am glad I edicted there, I suppose. Tarmo Goat. Sure. Now the opponent can force us to shuffle away our Liliana with a search if they're so inclined. We still do have one basic land to fetch. No other fetchables in the deck. Treetop Village. All right. Let's try to attack the Teferi. Cool. I guess there was some incentive there to sandbag the treetop, but I imagine they were... Yeah, I mean... If they're just fielding no matter what, maybe we should have sandbagged the treetop. I don't know. I just don't know what that last card in their hand is, so... Kind of felt correct to, to make them use that there, but... Maybe it's just a land, and maybe the Goyf will just get us there. It'd be pretty lucky if true, but... All right, we definitely play the Bob here. Obviously, this is worse against a Supreme Verdict, but they're verdicting away our Tarmogoyf anyway. Can't really play around that. This is way better against so many other things. Again, we're just going to be one damage shy of lethal on a crucial turn, but we still are closing in on it, that's for sure. I, I, am, I guess these Blink decks are playing fewer... Oh boy, Snapcaster is so good. What do they... They just have Path and Cryptic here. Or Opt, I suppose. Or Serum Visions, but that's not on the table. Yeah, Path to Exile. Yeah, that's pretty good. They Path the Bob. No basics to find. All right, I imagine a chump block is imminent here. No. All right, well, let's sandbag a land now. I guess better late than never. And uh, I was just saying, I don't think these blink decks play as many copies of Crypto of uh, Celestial Colonnade. At least that's how it appears. All right, I mean... Oh, the Flood is unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable amounts of Flood. I'll be pretty happy if this is just, just a chump block. 
Okay. We're going to sandbag these lands in case of Tireless Tracker or Collective Brutality. Opponent was playing with fire a little bit there, I guess, if only the only thing they had there was the, the chump block, having not done it last turn because it gave us another turn to draw Decay or Pulse or whatever, but or Liliana. Either Liliana, really. So Teferi will bounce our Goyf draw card. It's very annoying. Another Goyf. Well, uh, once more, I'm going to just kind of play them both. Fairly awkward, though. They've just had so many more chances to see a Supreme Verdict now. Okay, Sorceries, though, they had Flash. Well, Verdict is not off the table. Maelstrom Pulse. Okay, let's attack. Timely Reinforcements. That's a nice one. Alright, let's pulse the Teferi. If we can. Dovin's Veto. Alright, you got it. <laughs> oh man, the stall is real, but that's what blue white does. Something they do very well. Thought sees snapping that one off. Oh, snapcaster cryptic. Yeah, okay. That's that's pretty good as well. Oh, just Snap Path? Interesting. Yeah, I expected the Cryptic, but fair. Okay, the Fetch. The Fetch again. I don't know what this is. Like a Secure the Wastes or something? Restoration Angel. Oh my god, for another Snap. Uh, well, there's no other path, at least, but I guess Snap Opt. The, amount, the uh, value train is pretty insane here. Guess we're attacking Teferi since this isn't lethal anyway, so force a jump here. Alright, well the opponent is empty-handed, but they can cash in the Teferi if they so desire for another draw. And they can... Oh, see, right, Serum Visions is cast at instant speed, so that is a bit of a better opt. Top top with the Serum. Well, it's not looking good. <laughs> Not looking good at all. And they keep the Teferi around, which is also not looking good for us. Narset. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good, OP. Path to Exile off of Narset. Also pretty good. Alright, well, they've probably got us, but if we top deck like Tireless Tracker, choke. Ah, <sighs> do we even want to show them the choke? Probably, like, we're probably just not... They can't really play around a choke very much. Um... So, I mean, I guess we're not quite dead. We'll play the choke, but there is an argument there for just scooping and... Saving a little time on the clock, concealing information.
Cryptic, yeah, we're dead. We're dead. Okay, so we shouldn't have showed the choke there. See what we draw, but we're probably just scooping it up. Lily the Last Hope. Yeah, she, yeah, okay. She's just going to eat the cryptic. We're dead on board. All right, well, that was a close game. The opponent's top decks were pretty good um, in some pretty important spots, but and we flooded like crazy. Uh, I think we want the second decay now that we've seen their full list. Um, not interested in a fatal push. The second spell bomb doesn't seem necessary. The problem's going to be what to cut for this decay, but we do know they play Teferi in our set, and Sphere and Click, and Wall and Snap. Many, many targets. Um, um, um. Yeah, I, I really doubt they play Search for Ascanta, so... We could cut maybe Nile Spellbomb. But Spellbomb is just such a such a nice little part of the part of the uh, puzzle in our deck. It would be way too greedy to cut a second land, but especially on the play, but I do kind of want to. Yeah, guys, I don't know. I don't know what the very best cut is here. You know, I, I guess we actually probably do just play with this one decay. Like, we could definitely leverage the second, but that's maybe is that's just being a little bit too reactive. Like, if even if we get a Planeswalker with it, they've already gotten some form of value off of it. It's not like it's the cold, hard answer to everything they're doing. It's a good keep. Really good keep. Take them all, opponent. Take them all, and we will capitalize. Yeah, this this is the classic BGX curve of thought season to Goyf and to Liliana, and the three lands to play them. We also have Collective Brutality as the kind of seventh card making up the numbers here, and that is a very good one early on in a matchup like this, so we should be able to navigate our way into a commanding early position. We'll see. You know, that doesn't mean that we're going to win by any means against this deck, but it does mean that we've got a really good shot. Opponent decides not to mulligan, sadly. Okay, Thoughtseize is showing us Logic Knot, Dovin's Veto, Snapcaster Mage. We might be priced into just taking both counter spells here, turns one and two, and then going on the Lily plan. I think we are. So they picked up an opt, which they'll use here, and that means they've that's a really nice draw for them actually, because that means next turn or turn three rather, they'll be able to uh, snap to pressure the lily and opt if they want to do that. Colonnade. We got a duress. We may actually be pitching that here to Lily. Good card, but... I think that's the play. Really hope we top deck an untapped land next turn. And we get to just dump out our hand. Get a field out of their hand. Fulminator Mage. 
All right, new plan. Take out Pitch at Goyf, play the Fulminator. Hit the Colonnade. Field is out of their hand. Their hand is Snapcaster Island, one unknown. And I believe it to be correct to simply hit it right here, right now. It's going to keep them off of Cryptic Command Mono, which is one of the best ways they can catch back up from a uh, from a Liliana kind of running both players out of resources like this. Now, this way they do get to pressure her, of course, like I said earlier, but um, still think this is this is the play. They went bottom with that opt. They found another land, so they're going to hit four mana anyway. All right, Blooming Marsh is awkward. But, yeah, I mean, it's a shame, but... I guess we are... Eh... Let's see what happens here. Does Goyf resolve? All right. Let's just keep getting cards out of their hand. Got to be mindful of the clock. I've kind of just been narrating and thinking and all that, but... Mindful of the clock, and the opponent seeing a whole ton of opts here, which is quite nice. I uh, think it's been pretty crucial for them sculpting their plays early on. To, not to state the obvious, but I guess the thing that's less obvious about that is that blue-white doesn't necessarily always have that happen, right? Just kind of uh, a card that can show up <laughs> not as frequently as this. They seem to be playing the full four copies, that's for sure. Purging the Lily. That's good. That's very good. But they are on only three lands still. So that's a thing. We've got Goyf in the Treetop Village is not that exciting because they're on Field of Ruin, but if nothing else, it makes them use a turn to do that in theory. Opponent's attacking. Okay, do we have a Supreme Verdict incoming? We might. Okay, not quite. All right. Definitely going for the attack here, and if they've got the Cryptic Command, then we can resolve another Goyf. It's only field, sure. And there's definitely no way we don't play the second Goyf. Yes, it plays into Verdict, but we just have to make them have that here. Like, Goyf is not a card that really gets better if we sandbag it. Alright. I'm gonna block. I bet they have a Verdict. Uh -huh, Wrath of God. Okay, nice top deck, though. Lily of the Veil is a really nice top deck. Well, Hope Springs Eternal, my friends. Hope Springs Eternal. There's yet another op. That card is everywhere right now. One, two, three. They've seen all four ops, yeah. All right. Okay, Field of Ruin, not bad. We're not playing around Cryptic Command. We're playing for the high upsides here. If they've got Cryptic, that's a blowout, but we're not supposed to play around that when we have Field. Oh, that's so awful. That's so awful for us. All right, you got us. We'll sandbag that one. We haven't seen any tireless trackers all 
all match, and they're like our one of our best cards in the matchup. So one of those would do just just nicely any day now. More reactive stuff. This is bad for us on the clock. It's bad for us as far as trying to out top deck blue white control, but at least it isn't out to a Teferi or some really high value planeswalker. Uh, Treetop is a fine draw actually, but again, not necessarily in the market for that at this particular time. Opponents just on the snap ops plan, sure. Uh, they found a field that's annoying, but I don't think it's quite correct to field their field and lose the value. Let's just make them use it right now. And we are going to jam this, Bob, despite no real effective... Uh, ability to double spell again we're, we're kind of because we have been so low on resources oh boy vendillion click i think we have to trophy this spending a lot of uh time uh trophying and pulsing their creatures in this matchup but i don't think it's really been wrong to do so thus far Oh no, they've got a path, they've got everything. They've got it all, they've got it all. Alright, we're still top decking so live. Wall of Omens is a redraw basically, and it extends the game. We are kind of in a racing situation to be fair. Alright, we really need some gas. Tracker, Liliana, something, Inquisition. Not going to use it yet, we're going to force a spell through with that. Next turn, we're going to top deck the gas. Next turn, we're going to force it through with Inquisition. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. There it is. Oh, wrong order. Wrong order. Inquisition first. All right, show me, like, two lands and a counter spell. This is just a counter spell. Looks like a logic knot. A big old logic knot. That's fine. One, two, three, four. Yep, can't pay. You got us. Alright, gotta jam the tracker. Hope she resolves. We're. Oh, yeah, okay, we're in business. Immediately cracking a clue. Another path, come on. All right, we need this draw to be good. Get us a Lily of the Last Hope, another tracker. I think we do have to just kind of play her while we know there's no counter magic live. Restoration Angel, goodness. Uh, you know, if the opponent waited a turn, they could have blinked the Snapcaster and passed the Tracker before we get to untap, but I guess maybe racing us is just better. I don't think we take the block on, on Snap here. We're just kind of all in on drawing something good anyway. Alright, Lily of the Veil uh, is not bad, but we need to generate a clue here. Try to find an... Oh, we're out of basics. Well, fail. Fail, fail, fail. Okay. Uh, I guess... I guess that's a misplay. I guess we're dead. I was thinking that we could... You know, we, we basically have to draw clues off of Tracker to have a chance in this game. Um, but I guess technically we should have traded with a snap last turn and then... Yeah, good game. Good game, well played. Then we'd ha technically have another turn to live here, but honestly, 
might have been correct to not take that block anyway, in case we top deck a, like a land and whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, we just, I guess from that point, didn't really have an out anyway. Let's see what our next card is. Dark Confidant. Yep. Not going to stop the Restoration Angel. So we were dead no matter what we did. Tough game. Tough game. Uh, Blue White Control, what more can you say? This is why I've got Choke and Duress in the board now. And they're only going to get better from Modern Horizons. Now that is a kind of general statement. It could be that the changes they're making are... You know, y you can't get better against every archetype at the same time, right? So it's possible that some of the changes they're making are not conducive to them outgrinding us in a really long, grindy, interactive games like you just saw there. But it is also possible that they that they are. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. And in fact, that's going to be the subject of an upcoming scouting report for my Patreon supporters. Uh, the supporters voted on that for this upcoming month for June, but we actually decided to push it back to July because there's no point in doing a big investigation and write up into blue light control right now when they're about to change with Modern Horizons. Now, of course, I could speculate, but I think it would be better to let Horizons actually come out, let the control players play for a few weeks, and then do a scouting report on them for July. So instead, this month, we are going to actually be doing a deep dive on Plague Engineer. Um, what's up with these no-land hands? We got them all. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a fine six. We're on the draw. Hard to say whether we want that, so I guess we'll bottom. But hard to say. Pretty pretty free thing to top, all things considered. Flagstones of Trocare. Uh, sure. I don't know if this is a deck where Leon and Arbiter is at all involved, so I'm going to run out my fetch land in case I need to fetch this turn. When it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card, put it on tapped. You got it. Okay, they didn't float mana first though. I, I think that's the trick, but they didn't need to, I suppose. Um, that's so many utility lands that I'm not supposed to be playing around Blood Moon, I don't think, but don't really know what I'm up against, to be fair. Okay, Tracker is a good draw, again, in, in, unless we get Blood Moon. And uh, it's Confidant Pass. Goblin Rabble Master. Okay, makes a goblin with... Haste, goblins must attack. Sure. Okay, looks like a prison deck to me, but they didn't have an explosive start. We haven't seen the hate pieces yet. But these Rabble Master and, and the other one, they usually just see play in these prison uh, style red or red-white decks for the most part. Definitely not trading off with a goblin token here, but admittedly our Liliana the Veil just got a lot worse. So, yeah, let's see what Bob yields. Abrupt Decay? Yeah, that's pretty good. We're going to Decay the Rabbler, play our Hiss and Quagmire, which was also a decent find, and attack for two. And now, now I am suspicious for Blood Moon, but there's nothing we can do about it at this point. Just hope our Bob draws us out of it, and the opponent doesn't have much else going on, if indeed it is Moon. But Nahiri, Nahiri is a beating. Nahiri's a beating right there, that is for sure. Oh, this doesn't have to attack anymore because of... Uh, because there's no more Rabble Masters, so what do we do here? So many, so many good options, honestly. 
I think it should just be track her into land, but Lily resolving our Liliana taking up is pretty sweet too, but I think this is too good to pass up. And the opponent, of course, sat back, so we couldn't just kill the Nahiri with Hiss and Quagmire. So it does show you how highly they rate the Nahiri. They got Helix, okay. This is another... Uh, it's a Stone Rain. Wow. All right. Interesting. Well... guess it's kind of now or never on our Liliana of the Veil. Maybe now or never isn't the correct term, but it seems like now is the pretty much optimal time. I think I just picked my other Liliana here as well. If they, like, attack her and helix her, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. We do need to find a way to deal with the Nahiri, and that's one reason I actually didn't want to pitch the land there, because we might need to aggressively crack clues starting next turn, but... They've got Wrath of God that they pitched away. Boom and bust. Destroy target land you control and target land you don't control, or destroy all lands for six. Ah, uh, Rabble Master punishes us pretty hard for for that. Uh, they've just got a really good progression. That Nahiri was savage, and now Nahiri is finding them lots of other stuff, plus presumably threatening to go get an Emrakul, although I don't necessarily know that for sure. All right, so we need some love off the top here. What's the last card in their hand? Another Lightning Helix, probably? Looks like it. And looks like they're going to make us take up and then Helix. So I'm going to just take my read on that in Edict. Might not be correct, but... I think we need to deal with the board here, so let's take up with the Lily. And sure, we'll play the Scoos, even though we suspect they have a Helix. The Scoos is not that, that valuable right now with only one green source in play after we cast it. Sure, they did have the Helix. And the need, the pressing need, again, to remove this Nahiri. So I kind of like trading off there with the Helix. They get to pitch a Simeon Guide. The Nahiri loot's been insane here. And then they find another Planeswalker. Ah, oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so they can... Yeah, they just kill our Liliana here. My goodness. Alright, well... Looks like a pretty bad matchup for us, and the opponent's curved out really well, and... Uh, okay. Yikes. I'll just play the Marsh like we're... We're probably dead, even if we get mooned. I'm not really playing around moon anymore. And they've got some double white stuff, and yeah, could be they don't even play blood moon. Here comes Emrakul, right? Right. Okay, well that was miserable, but we were in a decent position throughout much of that game. The opponent just never stopped curving out, never stopped hitting the gas. Uh, they always had answers to our stuff, and that was that. So, uh, we do want Decay. I, you know, Explosives is not the worst for cleaning up those tokens, but I don't think we per want that, per se. Uh, Fulminator Mage, probably not where we want to be. A, a valid role player, I suppose, but we're probably going to have better cards to bring in. I like Duress. Collective Brutality, well, I think this is actually good because it's going to kill the Rabble Masters. 
and it's going to take away, you know, Lightning Helix, Wrath of God. Uh, so I think that's fine. I don't think this is a Damnation matchup, so nothing else. Uh, so we're considering... I guess we're only definitely bringing in two, and then we're considering Brutality, and then maybe some other less-than-ideal things. But... In Prison matchups, I find that most of our main deck cards are pretty good, so we might not have that much room. Is this a matchup where we can cut a land? It probably is. Probably is, so we'll cut a Blooming Marsh, because we are respecting the potential of Blood Moon, I suppose. So we cut a Marsh, we bring in Decay Duress. Do we have, like, a standout worst card? We might be able to move away from some number of Fatal Push from, like, one Scavenging Ooze, again, if we assume Moon is on the table. It's just a little slow and clunky anyway. So one Push, one Scooze, bring in a Brutality. And that's probably it. We probably just run with mostly our main deck here. Everything else is pretty good. So, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Well, here's a matchup where both of our changes feel good. Let's see how they do for us. Oh boy. What an awkward hand against Blood Moon. It's very dead to Blood Moon. But... It's got a lot of power. It's got a lot of upside. I think we do keep it. Doesn't seem like a matchup where we win. If we mulligan. <laughs> you know, to not to put too fine a point on it, but... <sighs> Another 3-drop. Alright, we just really need this Bob to, to stick, I think. So, hopefully they don't have the turn 2 Lightning Helix. Turn 2 Lightning Helix. Alright, Hissing Quagmire, sure. Um, I think we hold the Brutality now. Because it's probably more important to kill a Rabble Master than it is to check their hand at this exact moment. Molten Rain. What an, what an annoying deck to face. Okay, well, let's check your hand now. Well, lots of targets. Crumble to Dust is in against us. Oh my god, this is miserable. Target land... My god. This is just like a land destruction deck. Like This is like red-white Panza. Alright, so... I guess Crumble the Dust is the take. We'll make them kill one of their own lands if they want to kill ours, which I'm sure they do. We've got an entire handful of uncastables. Like, we're not beating this on a mulligan anyway, right? Unless we just... Mulligan to, like, a six-lander. <laughs> ah. They top-decked a Flagstones of Trocare, which is the actual perfect top-deck to make Boom and Bust good. Well, there's a b bit of synergy, and there's a bit of nothing from our side. Have I ever told you guys how much I loathe prison decks? I guess we play it out, right? But... Till they show me a Planeswalker or a Rabble Master, I guess we play it out. Well, there's a clock. Literally can draw nothing but three drops. All right. Enough said. Enough seen for me. Fun games. Fun, fun games. The opponent's name is Cheesy. I must say. I must say aptly named, my friend. Uh, yeah, people want more land destruction in modern. Really? Like, they want uh, Sinkhole, for instance. People say it's a way to stop Tron, but Tron's entire game plan involves just pure consistency for cantripping. They can tutor lands, they can just, uh, you know, with one and two mana, dig for more lands. 
the land destruction decks line up really well against the fair decks. And, uh, you know, not all the time we can we can cripple them with discard and all that, but yeah, I didn't even know the opponent was on basically a Ponza deck there. And in game one, we would have stomped them if they were on that plan, but they had all the rabble masters and removal and planeswalkers. So uh, this hand's fine. So yeah, be careful what you wish for. You know, we do have Pillage entering Modern. Um, you know, I, I think that card's fine, but I think there is also a reason that the land destruction, you know, play style is frowned upon by development because it's just simply not very good gameplay. But in any case, we're up against another Celestial Colonnade deck, so this is just a parade of horrible matchups. And, uh... Yeah, I guess we... Because the opponent's on a two-land keep. I'm kind of interested in taking the Wall of Omens. That's just their clear best play on turn two, if we leave it. Alright, so now we have to Thought Seize here, get... Logic not out of their hand, unless they choose to Dovin's Veto this, which they may. But this is going to be the best way to clear the path for our Bob. Okay. Yep, that's the correct play from the opponent, for sure. Running out the Field of Ruin there kind of gave them the green light to do it, but I think it's still correct to do so. Ooh, okay. So they have Narset, but they don't play or they'll just pass. So, <sighs> it's basically a question of what do we want to trade for their logic knot. It's got to be a creature. And we're going to shock in to make their logic not a little bit worse, and let's make it the goif. Or they just let it resolve, that's cool too. Shocking in makes their logic not worse, makes them worried about a follow-up play, and also lets us hold up Fatal Push. They got Teferi. It's pretty good. But at least we get to resolve something this turn. Ooh, the opponent didn't hit their fourth land. Nice. Very nice. So it is uh, tempting to play Liliana here in, in some ways, but I think it's definitely better to just double spell. There's the fourth land. Well, <sighs> Supreme Verdict. Guys, what's going on today? What's going on today? Will the opponent ever not have the best stuff they could have? Let's find out. Um, Liliana the Last Hope is good here, though. For sure is good. Buying back, probably Dark Confidant. Surgicaling Bob's in response. Well, never mind that. Wow. Wow. Very unexpected, but there you have it. All right, looks like we're just getting a goif. Uh, tracker is tempting, but between the fact that I can't play her this turn and the fact that I don't have a land in hand, I think goif is just correct. All right, so we know the opponent's whole hand minus what they just drew. Logic Knot, Snapcaster, Mage, Narset, one unknown. Here's the Narset. Uh, what did they reveal? You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card. Did they reveal another Narset? Doesn't say here. I guess we assume that they did. 
but I don't actually know that that's correct. Uh, anyway, we're going to attack the Teferi, I suppose, based on that also, because the Teferi bounce is very annoying, so sure. Okay, apparently there's a path in hand, too. Well, 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 well. All right, the opponent's just curving out so perfectly. It's... There's just no point at which they haven't had the the ideal situation for these early turns, basically, as far as I can tell. They find another path immediately off of Narset as well. And yeah, I think that, that other card that we kind of missed was Narset. They've got field as well. There's just no base that they don't have covered, right? Um, but I think we're going to attack with treetop anyway. Make them do a lot of stuff here this turn. Guess we'll send them both at Teferi. Yep. All right, so... No land for tracker is, is very, very tilting. Uh, and I, I guess we have to play for the long game and keep our Liliana around anyway. So sure, let's tick her up. Throw this Goyf out there. They could logic knot it if they want. They don't see the need. Fair enough. All right, and I think we still know their whole hand. Until now, until they drew off of Teferi anyway. Um, still no land for buying back the tracker. All right. Well, let's get our value anyway. We'll get the tracker back. And let's try casting it. I'm, I think they're probably priced into countering this because they don't know that we don't have a land. And then we'll resolve a goif. I guess we're just putting both glyphs down. They can snap path one of them, and then they've got to find a way to deal with the other, I guess. And I don't think we're going to fatal push the snapcaster because we would like to protect our Liliana from colonnade if that's what they choose to do. And of course, if we can protect the Lily, it's a free kill on the snap next turn anyway. So, yup, yup, out of basics. They're fetching. Oh no, that can't be good news. What did they top deck now? <laughs> Is it just a colonnade? Sure. I mean, they know about our fatal push, so maybe they top decked counter magic. Oh, 
Oh no! Oh yeah, we can't because of Teferi. We can't cast right. Well, there's nothing we could do about that anyway. Yep. Yeah, Dev, I mentioned how I hate blue-white control, especially these days. Yep, yeah, I forgot about that, but again, no way to really play around that. So all we missed out on is being slightly more mana-efficient last turn, which does not matter at all with all these lands. So now we're going to push for snap, I suppose. Try to finally kill this Teferi. And since they don't have any, uh, any fields down, I think it's correct to throw the treetop out there. Yep, here's that other Narset they've been hanging on to for a minute now. Just looking for more action. They find path. <laughs> I think our opponents have found path literally every time they've activated an R set in these in this league. Uh, let's. I mean, we're out of basics anyway. Let's just hit the colonnade for now. Right now, we're out of basics for the fields. We're out of basics for the paths. It's all the same. Okay, let's try to kill Narset. Of course, we top decked a Fetchland, the literal worst top deck because we have no more Fetchables. Snapcaster Path. We're trying to keep our spirits high, my friends, but <laughs> what are you supposed to do against this? What are you supposed to do? You know, maybe Tron's not such a bad deck after all. Not not that Tron's even great against Blue White anymore, because they have all the all these tools, but Oh look at Jace, that's almost quaint. It's like, oh you still play Jace, you still play the best planeswalker ever. It's kind of like a luxury card in the deck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they don't really need it, it's just cool to have it, right? Fatal push. Um I can't beat the Jace when we're already this far behind. And this has been an excruciating league in terms of all the games going long, so I'm just scooping to that. There's just... There's just no way we beat that, so... Let's uh, side how we did before, which I think was like this, without the second Decay, without the second Spellbomb, but with these seven cards. Um, you know, again, it is possible that something is better than a second collective brutality. Maybe we'll try that. Maybe we'll try a decay over a brutality and play that way. But either way, a uh, pretty close approximation to where we want to be. Um, yeah. All right, it's time, time for our luck to change. Time for our opponents to stop just curving out. As, as though they drew it up on us. Yeah, it's a hand. Pretty decent one. Okay, the opponent's on a four-lander with Snap, Opt, Jace. Suppose we're taking the opt trying to reduce their likelihood of finding a, a good answer to Bob early on. Although it is worth considering the late game and the prospect of just taking Snapcaster Mage and allowing them to, to have that opt, right? But All right. Bob shows us a hissing quagmire, so our hand's still a little light on the old action, but we do get to Inquisition here. Hopefully the opponent just doesn't 
have only snap in hand, they can flash that in. That'd be annoying. Looks like they might be. They sure are. Now, do we whiff? Why wouldn't we whiff? Jace and Wrath of God are the spells. All right, so... There's no way we trade off here, and uh, the minor upside of holding up Abrupt Decay is if they top deck like a Detention Sphere, we can unstep Decay it, then get our Bob back, but I think against a Jace in Wrath Hand, we need our Man Lands down as early as possible, so let's play the Treetop and hope they don't max punish us with a top decked D-Sphere. If, if that happens, my friends, then you will know that this league is just <laughs> not meant to be. And it doesn't. In fact, we get a pretty good top deck of Tireless Tracker, so. That said, I don't think we play her, because then it's a very easy Wrath of God for the opponent. And firing up Treetop is a very easy Field of Ruin. So we're just playing... Draw, go here. And drawing two per turn, that's not that bad of a spot to be in, so... Yeah, I considered the field there just to use our mana efficiently this turn and get rid of Colonnade, but... Once again, I think the priority here is got to be to resolve the uh, creature lands. Man, how bad is it that our Inquisition whiffed? That's just like one of the ways in which, which this could go wrong, right? But... Alright, it looks like the verdict is imminent. Uh, but we're going to make them do it, so no block. You know, if they play the Jace, it'd be a little risky from the opponent. Wow, no Jace, no Verdict? Okay, we get to draw again. Jeez, look at these Bob hits. They're pretty rough. Okay, now we'll attack. Restoration Angel. Yeah, sure you got me. And of course, this is something that these double decays just can't hit. So annoying. So, so annoying. Alright, well. I'm just going to take the kill on the snap. It's an understandable block in some ways for the opponent, but... I think if I had a removal, I would have just spent it before they went to the block. But in any case... We will make two clues while the coast is clear. And then we get to hold up Abrupt Decay, but the Restoration Angel clock is actually kind of real. And it, Decay can't hit Jace either, so... You know, would I have been better off with another Collective Brutality here? Maybe. Maybe just killing the Angel second main phase, assign two damage to it. Get the Wrath of God out of their hand, we could have escalated. Oh, they've got to ferry. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. No attack with the angel. They're playing defense. Okay. Uh, we punish them for that with the Draw of Assassin's Trophy, which allows us to kill the Angel and attack Teferi. It could turn on a potential Path to Exile in their hand, but I think we know their whole hand. I think it's Field, Wrath, Jace, right? So let's go for it. Oh, 
Okay, success. And we've got the tracker for Mork S. Um, opponent's going to get the Jace here, sure. So we still need to answer him. The decays are still annoyingly bad, but the opponent's off of cryptic mana for at least one turn. So hopefully we can get the tracker down, make a couple more clues, and take it from there. Well, another tracker <laughs> seems fine. Now, it's very tempting to play a tracker and just make four clues, but I don't believe that to be correct. Um, number one, that plays into the Wrath of God. Still card advantage overall for us, mind you, but... Are they scooped to this? Okay. Sure. I mean, the league's been going poorly, so I'll take it. Didn't really expect that one, though, my friends. So what do we think about this second decay? It looks so clunky there but it's probably a little bit better on the draw. Yeah, let's let's run it back. Um, we kind of saw the worst case scenario for that Abrupt Decay. Let's see if we can get a better ca better use case for it. And again, this is kind of a more ex slightly more experimental league. Our, our list is still definitely strong, still definitely a good list, but we do want to see how we feel about uh, that tech moving forward. This is a good keep. So now's the time to do it, right? Shocking in the fountain for Serum Visions makes me think they might have a slightly land light progression, but that might not might not really mean that. Either way, we'll find out right now the duress. So they do have a land light progression, and it's Island Restoration Angel double opt. D sphere to fairy. They went bottom bottom. So they are desperately digging for land. So if they only had one opt, I think I would actually probably take that away. But the fact that they're going to whiff on in like a 25 land deck with two ops on a third land is just so unlikely. So as tempting as that is to try to land screw them, I don't think that's the play. So do we take D sphere or to fairy? Well that's a pretty easy to fairy because we have abrupt decay in hand. So, bye-bye to Fairy. Got to remember to play around the Restoration Angel. And let's run out this Tarmogoyf. If they choose to desphere this, we can just ignore that and play the Liliana next turn. And then get the Goyf back at our leisure. Here come the Ops on the Unstep, as expected. They went top with that one, so they've definitely found their third land by now. And top again. Okay. It's a tech. And I guess we are just jamming the Lily before they're on Cryptic Command Mana. Uh, don't really expect her to resolve, but at the same time, I still think it's correct to do so. Okay, she resolves. They're not without answers, that is for sure, but still pretty good for us. We've got to be really careful about the resto now. Ooh, they got... Ooh, okay, they got a lot of stuff. So they pitch a verdict. They've got the Snapcaster opt at the end step to pressure. And then, of course, the Restoration Angel in hand as well. Detention's Fear as well. Plus a lot more card selection with opt being flashed back. Yep, there's the... Ooh. Ooh. Will they, won't they? I was going to say, here comes the attack on Lily. I expect them to, but... Yeah, okay, sure. So what do we see here? Do they pass holding up the angel? They do. All right, so I believe that means our first move is to attack before we do anything else, see what happens. 
take it from there. Blooming Marsh is not a good draw, but that's fine because it means it's a pretty free pitch to Liliana. And blocking is kind of a fool's errand here, like leaving the Goyf back to block. It's just not correct against a blue-white control deck. So sure, let's take out Pitch of the Marsh, play the treetop. And we're going to, I guess, have to trophy that angel if they flash it in on the unstep. We get a colonnade out of their hand, all right. Now, trophying the angel feels pretty poor here because it does give them land number five. And it also leaves us colder, very cold, in fact, to a Jace or a Teferi, but... Like the... Ooh, they get it tapped. They just have path. Sure. Well. You got it, I suppose. So how do we feel about Decay? Now, Decay is not live because they just blink it with Angel. Yep. Don't think it would necessarily be correct anyway, but it's definitely just off the table. A tireless tracker. Yeah, I guess that's probably the correct play, even without any lands to follow her up. So let's take up an abrupt decay is what's going to go by the wayside, I'm afraid. We just can't cast all of our spells this turn, no matter what we do. They lose the D-Sphere, so that's one less reason for us to actually need the decay. And let's go for the tracker. All right. So I really hope they flash in the angel here to try to pressure the lily off the field. It's oh, it's another flash flyer. It's a Vendillion click. Well, I guess we're just priced into trophying that rather than losing our trophy. The question is, are we priced into trading our tracker, who has acquired no clues as yet for a Snapcaster mage? We may actually be. We may actually be. Then again, maybe, maybe not, because they can... Yeah, I'm gonna say no. We gotta say goodbye to Liliana. She's just not that great anymore with the prospect of Restoration Angel, but... Yep, Resto Snap Path. Very, very good. But it, in a way, it feels good to get this done kind of on our own terms like that. That's just kind of an axe hanging over our head, that Restoration Angel in their hands. We draw Inquisition. What a, what a terrible time for that, but I think we still cast it while they're tapped out. No comment. No comment on us whiffing yet again with Inquisition. Not our league, guys. That's all right. We're still uh, we're still having fun. We're still seeing some, some you know, real games. These are all real games, but every little break is kind of uh, kind of against us here. And then a tireless tracker again, right on time. Uh, can you imagine? Can you imagine if things had come just in a slightly different order? The opponents being super conservative with their attacks. So we can use the tracker as bait, but there's no real reason to. The opponent's not attacking us, so I guess we try to just force through a triple spell turn in the future. You know, get a 
get a discard spell off the top maybe, or just a land to make Tracker actually good. And the opponent just rips Teferi, so nothing matters. <laughs> nothing matters when you rip the Teferi. All decision-making kind of goes out the window. At least against our deck, right? It's just never wrong to just slam the Teferi and see what happens. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once again, no comment on how just perfectly uh, shy we are of having functional turns here. I guess we're baiting out Cryptic with Tarmogoyf. Then we're playing Dark Confidant. And then we're hoping to snowball from there, but... Against Teferi, we are probably just dead. Okay, so now what do we do? If we do nothing, they're just going to end step, bounce, and draw. So let's play it, Bob. Alright, if only we had a trophy or anything, but we don't. I've never seen such a high density of paths in, in my life, <laughs> except until this league. Okay, we gotta land, we gotta land. Will she resolve? Of course not. Logic not for a million. Logic not for seven just to flex. Well, 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 we are getting stomped out today, my friends, but that is all right. We are still, again, playing some, some real games, but uh, yeah, a parade of bad matchups. Double blue-white control, Valakit, and Boros Ponza. Boros, Planeswalker, Ponza. Value Town that just probably loses to every linear deck in the format, but is pretty good against us. So, let's try for the uh, salvage of, of half our ticks here. We're trying for the 2-3. And let's try for a reasonable matchup as well. Not that not that some of those matchups are unreasonable. Like, blue-white's not unreasonable, but uh, the opponents had just miraculously good progressions. I think all six games that we've seen. Uh, they, never, they never failed to keep seven. They never failed to get their curve out, you know, if if they were in positions where they kind of kept a, a low land keep or maybe they lacked early interaction, their their top deck always kind of filled in the gaps for them. So um, blue-white is a reasonable matchup, but I think a majority of the time we do need them to stumble just a little bit. Like, give us a little bit of a window and we'll uh, potentially take advantage of it. But especially with these Teferi Narset builds, man, you know, if they're curving out... Seems seems pretty bad for us. <laughs> seems pretty bad for us. I never thought I'd miss Terminus, but I kind of miss Terminus. Alrighty. So, we have a... Once again on the draw, uh, this is a fine keep. Opponent goes Forest Ancient Stirrings. All right. Well, Urza's Tower. Why not? Why not just finish off this league with Tron? At least they played Turn 1 Forest. I think playing Turn 1 Forest, like, a hand that makes you keep Turn 1 Forest has got to be so bad in a, in a blind game one. Am I wrong about that? Like, don't you, aren't you supposed to mull that? But doesn't look like they're going to get punished for it against us with this hand. Our hand is hoping in vain that the opponent's on some kind of a of an interactive deck or some kind of a a more normal deck, but alas and alack, 
It is Tron. It is Tron. The Tarkir block forest, and we just draw a basic forest. Sweet. Um, so normally it'd be Goyf. But I'm wondering if it should just be Bob given the... <sighs> Given the fact that they are on a little bit of a slower start, maybe it makes more sense to try to put an approximately as good clock down while digging for more interaction. We want double spell turns from here on out if possible, so that we want like Thought Season to Goyf next turn, or we just want Liliana of the Veil. Um, the only way we really get punished for this, I think, is if the opponent has a Walking Ballista here. And they could... They're more likely or as likely, I think, to have Relic as they are to have Walking Ballista, which is another reason I, I kind of like playing the Bob there, because Relic is very in vogue right now in Tron main decks from what I have seen. They find the mine, they play the mine. And they f they also found a mine off of their stirrings, is that correct? So they still have a mine in hand. There's the relic, see? I told you. I don't just make this stuff up. <laughs> oh boy. Um, it's just basically air, except it has Field of Ruin, so I guess we are... Uh, you know, because we, we don't have anything else that's good. Tarmogoyf's pretty poor against the relics, so... So they know about the Quagmire. So it'll be a draw step field the tower. Hey, I mean, at least we drew some disruption for Tron, right? That's, that's definitely not a bad thing. But these main deck relics really slow us down, like... It was probably correct to just go on the field plan there anyway, but if we didn't have the need to, you know, just the fact that our goifs would normally be such a good clock, and here they're not. Um, but hey, there goes the relic, so that's something. They got power plant. They got another <laughs> relic. Sweet, and an oblivion stone. Even better. Even better. All right. What do we need? I don't even know anymore what we need off of Bob. Liliana of the Veil and Tireless Tracker are two respectable pickups. Um, I think Lily of the Veil is correct. Running them out of resources just seems really good right now. Even though we're going to get two for one by the O-Stone, at least it forces them to crack it, right? So let's pitch Swamp, I guess. Play a Quagmire. Alright, you know, getting a land out of their hand is not the worst. Even if it's only a forest. I expect that they're pretty priced into going land, crack the O-Stone here. Like, Bob and Liliana are both problems for them right now. And if that's the case, we might have a game on our hands. If not, it probably means they have something way better to do. Like, they just have Tron and a payoff. They do have a land, right? Oh, they go Expedition Map. Well, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Otron. Otron, Otron. So now they get to do everything. They get to assemble Tron and still crack the O-Stone. Which they do. They probably have another payoff in hand, but I guess it's possible that they don't. Okay, so clearly it is Tracker into Double Clue into Trophy here. I think we just keep them off of Tron. It's a nice draw.
And I suppose it's safe to draw step this. So that's what we'll do. Floating mana in response. That's very unusual for Tron. And if they play like a main deck all his dust or something, we get max punished, but might just be the opponent executing good practice. Let's hope. Alright. Good. <laughs> oh, that was about to be so annoying. But yeah, they're on Worm Coil mana. They're one away from hard casting Karn, so this is yeah, there's the Worm Coil, sure. Okay, let's go. Hmm. Blooming Marsh, not quite. Okay, crack a clue. Scavenging Ooze, also not quite. Yeah, we just play a Goyf here. But the Worm Coil is very, very good at extending this game. It's going to, like, 5 for 1 us here. Unless we can top deck, like, Liliana plus Maelstrom Pulse or something. Oh my god, Sanctum of Ugin. Karn the Great Creator. It's a Karn version. It's a Karn the Great Creator version. Oh joy. <laughs> oh joy. Okay. What's it gonna be? Crucible. Oh, yeah. That's a tough one. That's a tough nut to crack, so we've just got so many permanents we need to try to kill now. Oh, you gotta love it. Hey, Maelstrom Pulse. Okay, so we just simply can't do anything about them hitting their land drops anymore. I don't think. Uh, I guess we just kind of have to pulse the Karn, don't we? Before it goes to get the Mycosynth Lattice. And it's also shutting off our clues. So, yeah, Pulse. You... And I don't think playing another Tarmogoyf really accomplishes all that much. I think I like the high upside line of Cracking Clue looking for land or discard. We get a two drop. Uh, do we... Yeah, we force the block here. Making the Goyf 6-7 is definitely a nice turn of events. And now we get to Fatal Push a token. Now it's very possible the opponent just rips a payoff. They have Tron, they have Sanctum of Ugin, we're just completely dead. But they need the payoff first, and they've had plenty so far. It's a relic. Okay. Immediately cracking that, I assume. Indeed. Indeed. Hey, your Crucible just got a little bit worse. Sylvan Scrying. Okay, you know. That's, that's not a payoff either, so... It is only a matter of time before they hit another one, but until they do, until they do. So I guess we're going to push something here. Probably just the Death Touch one. All right, Kalidus. A little bit earlier, you would have been really nice, my friend. You would have been really nice for hosing that Worm Coil, but uh, it's not to be so... One, two, three, four, five, six. We could just play Goyf, Bob, Scooz here. But Scooz doesn't really do much. So I think I, again, go for the high upside play of cracking a clue. Looking for another land, looking for Thought Seizes, or... Okay, there's another land, sure. Let's attack with the tracker. And I think 
I think we need to crack another clue here. We're just... So I should have done that before damage. My bad. Uh, probably won't change the, the game. But really just in the market for a Thoughtseize. Another Swamp, sure. So... All right, let's play a Bob and pass. We're very cold to Ugin. That's one major reason. Ooh, Blast Zone. That's <laughs> so good. But yet again, not a payoff. So, but they can buy it back with Crucible. That's the that's the bad news. All right, so. Obviously, we're going to make our clue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It would be really nice here to have the ability to go Kalidus into Liliana shrinking the worm into collective brutality to kill the worm. But because none of that is live... I guess we just crack this clue first and see what we find. Lily of the Veil, I'll take it. The only problem with that is it gives them a free, you know, two for one off the blast zone next turn. So. <sighs> I think we just need to diversify along our curve as much as humanly possible here. So I'm actually going to attack with both. We can finish off the worm with brutality if it box blocks the bob. And then we can play another bob. Okay, so do we like escalating? It feels like it's pretty free to escalate, but at the same time, with Blast Zone repeatedly being bought back, maybe we just keep all the gas in hand. I don't really know. Um, we're definitely going to play the Kalidus. I mean, there's no way we present lethal next turn anyway, because they're just not letting our tracker live. So I guess we will not escalate. We'll just kill it. Pass. This has been an interesting game. There is no doubt about it. But this... I mean, as if Tron didn't have enough, now they have this Blast Zone Crucible of Worlds combo. So they get to crack it, they get to immediately buy it back, that's just so ridiculous. But, you know, with our creature lands and our CMC diversity, we might just possibly be able to still win through it. The problem is if the opponent top decks a bomb at any point, we're just still dead to that. Plus we're... Um, oh! Oh! Oh, I didn't know. I didn't notice, and maybe the opponent didn't either. Uh, Blast Zone is gonna hit that Crucible, so that only happens once to us. Well, that's nice now, isn't it? Okay, I had freely admit to not seeing that. Uh, Scooz also does play a role here as a, as somebody who gets around uh, that synergy. But anyway, so the opponent has one card in hand. I think. It's definitely not a bomb, so maybe we don't care that much about the Liliana getting it out of their hand. So... If we attack for five, that puts them to six. They're still not dead to double Quagmire, so I guess we don't want to attack with a Quagmire this turn. We're just going to go wide instead. So why don't we just... Like, get our value Liliana buyback tracker. Play the tracker, play the Lily Veil, put lethal on board that way. There are other ways to do this, but I think this is fine.
this gives us the most chances to draw to an answer if they top deck Ugin or something like that, that we just... Okay, that we just need to find a pulse for. Oh, we are out of basics. I didn't even look at that, but I... Mmm, okay, we're going to get a little bit punished for this, but this is still fine. We can still play a two-drop here. But no Liliana. Or maybe we will. Maybe they don't have another... Yeah, I thought they were going to go get another Ghost Quarter, was my assumption. So... We do have our overgrown tombs in the deck. I don't see them anywhere else. So we must. We sure do. Yeah, I like the Liliana fine here. Really shouldn't matter, it's just does the opponent top deck a bomb or do they not? But again, this this sequencing get, does give us the best way to find an answer to the bomb and keep the game going, if they find one. Um, you could argue that playing Liliana there was not as good as just playing a, a Tarmogoyf or something, but... Okay, um... Well, we'll edict. The tokens don't get made because of Kalidus. And that should be lethal. Good game. All right, that was a that was a fun one against Tron. That was an intense one. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, guys, the, we're we're kind of uh, we're we're up against a real gauntlet of bad matchups this league, and we're you know we've had some bad breaks, but honestly, you're seeing some real games. This is uh, this has been a long and grueling league. Every we've had to really earn our position in every game, win or lose. But hey, we're uh, we're doing we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Um, so Tron is another matchup where our duress feels pretty good. Obviously, Fulminator and Surgical are some of the really high-value cards. Um, beyond that, unfortunately, we don't have another Pulse to bring in, which we sometimes do, and I don't think anything else is too great. Like, Decay is fine. Um, I guess Decay is a little bit borderline, depending on, you know, what else you've got going on. But... Uh, in our case, it is Fatal Pushes that take a seat. Lily, the last hope, and, you know, usually if I only have six cards to bring in, one or the other of Scoos and Brutality, but I suppose Decay is just better than both. Like, the second Decay better than the third Scoos? Yeah, I'd say so, and, and better than Brutality as well, especially on the draw. So, I think this is totally fine. And let's go. All right, so, you know, we've got two chances to take down Tron here and salvage a decent result from this league. And we've got a hand that I think we have to keep. It doesn't disrupt turn three Tron yet, but it sure as heck sets them back if, if they don't have it and if we have our third land. Uh, we don't have the third land, but we do have action on turn one, so I'll take it. Inquisition U. Okay, uh, double Sylvan Scryings. Double Karn the Great Creator. Holy moly, that's a hand. At least it doesn't have turn three Tron, though, so now we're kind of all in on getting our third land on curve and taking it from there. Notably, we cannot decay Chromatic Star profitably. They just get the cantrip off of that anyway. Um, so we're definitely not going to do that, whereas if they go... If they... Okay. If they, for some reason, tapped out for the scrying without cracking that first this turn, then then we could have done so, but... Or we could have done so if it was a sphere, obviously. We don't do it to star. 
Might not be correct anyway, in that case. Might be better to just play Tarmogoyf, but just pointing that out. Okay, they get an Urza's Tower, so let's see... Oh, Treetop Village? It's a bit of a tilt, but... Oh, you know what? That doesn't even ensure Fulminator, because it's not double black with this forest still in hand, so... Treetop doesn't get us to turn three Fulminator anyway. Uh, I guess we're just playing the Goyf and really hoping for a black land off the top. You know, I'm looking forward to reworking this mana base with the Nourishing Peatlands. Really am. I think there is an opportunity, as I said in one of my videos, to make it more utility heavy and more consistent at casting our spells. Both improvements to both, which is a rare opportunity. Of course, that's going to come at the expense, I, I believe, of our life total, but that is probably going to be worth it. Like, if you look at the spread of decks we've faced this league, our life total has just been a pure resource in, in just about all of them. Now, granted, that's not every deck in the format, but, you know, the decks of the burn, the aggro decks, were a little bit better against those anyway. We can hopefully manage the... They find Ugin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And they show us the power plant when they know there's a... We know about the tower. So we're just screwed because we didn't hit our stupid third black land. Oh my god. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can't catch our breaks this league with any kind of consistency, my friends. But we're going to thought seize. Uh, I guess we're just taking away Ugin, probably. It's just the card we can't beat. Oh, they have two Ugins. Two Ugins, two Karns, two Sylvan Scryings. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Oh, no, 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 this is not it. All right, I guess we still take a Nugan. I mean, what are you supposed to do, right? What are you supposed to do? Well, you are seeing a league where things can go wrong. I don't want to make it out like it is always roses on this channel. I, I don't have the time to play so many leagues that I only cherry pick the ones where we do well. That's definitely not what I do. Um, but, you know, on average, we we do show the... Yeah, okay, we're just dead. Got Trond. On average, we, we do tend to... Uh, you know, I, I show you the vast majority of leagues that I play. The vast majority of leagues that I play are uploaded either as replays or more often as live commentated matches. Uh, yeah, we just run it back like this. But, you know, there is occasionally, I, I do play a league where there's just a ton of non-games and it's just not good content. And more often than not, those are my leagues where I also don't do as well. But those are relatively few and far between. So now you're seeing a, a, a league where things don't go well, but lots of good games anyway. So never let it be said that I, that I only upload the ones where I'm winning. And, uh, you know, we don't have any way to disrupt their land, but this is still a keep... This is still a keep. It's a really nice curve out. And the opponent has double power plant, so they're not particularly close to any any kind of early Tron shenanigans, so we have we have a lot of time. I'm, I'm considering leaving them Ancient Stirrings because it incentivizes them to go turn one forest, but I think it's still the, the card in their hand that's just the best. Let's just take it. They're probably not going to anyway. They're probably going to simply take the turn one power plant into uh, star line and then filter into green from there. Even if we leave stirrings. Okay, so Abrupt Decay gives us a window to hit this. This is the sphere. Like, we can we can hit this without getting punished for it. And that's actually really tempting. But I, I imagine it's just better to play Tarmogoyf, but that's so tempting. Let's just play the Goyf. I think, I think that's correct.
but that was a line worth considering, I suppose. Um, but at the end of the day, decay to hit, you know, like a stray map that they use at the end of the turn mono for, or to hit Oblivion Stone, perhaps most importantly, is pretty nice. But I think it might have been correct for opponent to lead on star there in case we did have nothing better to do than decay, but that's a really corner case thing. Hmm. Opponent runs out another power plant before seeing that draw as well, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know about that stuff, but in any case, uh, it is still just power plants. And we draw Bob pretty good, so Thought sees Bob attack, I guess. Okay, they got the third land that we knew about and nothing more. They've got a couple Thrags, a Karn Liberated, Worm Coil, Ugin, oh, I got everything, so we just take the lowest curve stuff, which would be a Thrag Test because it's really far away from Tron. We can also Surgical Thrags out of their hand at some point, which might be correct to do in this matchup. But not yet. You let them draw a couple more first, right? They top deck a sphere, okay. And that finds them in Urza's mind, that's pretty good. Alright, Bob, show us what's up. Fulminator Mage, Field of Ruin. Pretty good, not gonna lie, pretty good. Okay. All right, guys, our position's great. The opponent, uh, we want to fade a Relic or a Removal Spell. They just scoop to it. Okay, good enough for me. Good enough for me. They're very far behind there. And we did have Surgical for backup as well. Still might have been a tad of, a, of an early scoop, but hey, you never know. They know their hand and we don't fully. So, all right, guys, we clawed back our way to a 2-3. and three, And you know what? There is no worse feeling than going 2-3 and three in a competitive league. I'd rather go 1-4. and four. Yeah, I was going to say 0-5. Oh I, I guess I wouldn't rather go 0-5. Oh but 2-3, and three, you just get hosed. You just get nothing back. Here we get half our entry fee back. So, sure, that's fine. Um, and, hey, we had... I mean, I don't know the full contents of that Boros Prison deck. So... Who knows, but it seemed really, really tough for us. Um, very much a, a kind of a rogue deck uh, with with some rogue choices that I saw. I didn't see the prison cards that actually win you games against most of the format, like Chalice and Bridge. We just kind of saw um, <laughs> land destruction and value pieces. So, obviously really good against us. Uh, we had five terrible matchups. Um... Not, okay, let's not exaggerate. We had five unfavorable matchups ranging from moderately unfavorable, which blue-white control, and I and I guess Tron is, is only moderately unfavorable, to terrible, which I would say are Valakut and Prison. There's no really top-tier deck besides Valakut that is terrible for us. And hey, uh, we still went two and three. I think we were on the wrong side of variance for the most part. Uh, this is a fine result considering our circumstances, so... Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about, of course, everything that happened here. Uh, we've got Duress and Abrupt Decay that we tested the second copy of Decay. Um, we didn't see the matchups where this feels great. Like, it's this is going to feel great against humans, against merfolk, against the Aether Vile decks, against a lot of the Collected Company decks. Um, even good in mid-range mirrors, you know, and good in some situations against control decks even these days with all of their three mono walkers i thought we were the deck that got to leverage the three mono walkers but times have changed they're muscling in on liliana's territory we cannot allow this we can't allow it guys we gotta fight back with more abrupt decays maybe let me know what you think about that um i'm always always in the market for my viewers feedback because y'all are awesome Lots of intelligent commentary at all times on the channel, and I love it, so let me hear it. Obviously, if you saw any, any plays that you want to talk about, any lines I took, let's talk about that too. So, uh, we finished the, the month on a slightly sour note with a 2-3, and three, but holy moly, this has been an incredible month of results. 
this doesn't change that. We're still overwhelmingly positive. And I think that's going to be it until uh, for gameplay until Modern Horizons is alive, because my eyes are already on the horizon, you know. I'm already thinking about wanting to play with the new cards, so um, it was good that we got another league in. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you once again to con new confidant D.A. Binder and new tireless Schneier. Thank you both so much, and thank you as always to all Patreon supporters. Remember, my friends, stay tuned to the channel, because we're talking about the Horizon spoilers as they trickle in the the last of them um i'm recording this on a thursday i think we might be getting the full spoiler today uh so look for my next video maybe tomorrow on all this stuff but in any case thank you so much for watching stay tuned for my breakdowns of modern horizon spoilers and of course next month is when the fun begins i'm gonna do some kind of a limited event probably a sealed event uh i, I see there's a new five round one uh, or maybe it's new to me, I don't know. I'm probably just going to do the five-round sealed event to try to open some cards naturally. A little fun change of pace, and then from there, new deck techs, new gameplay featuring all of our new toys for, toys for Modern Horizons. I cannot wait, and I will see you for all of that on this channel. So thanks again for watching. I will talk to you all soon. Hope you have a great day.